I have told countless people just how shitty their lives would be when they leave my shop. It comes with the profession, you know? I started telling people's fortunes when I was about 15 years old. Coincidentally, that was the same year I dropped out of high school. The money was amazing, and with that, I realized that I wouldn't need any more education. I could just make my way in life pulling the wool over people's eyes, and they wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Pardon me, as many years in this business have changed my worldview. Pardon me, made me more cynical. It wasn't like that when I started out, no. I was so hopeful, so naive, so... What's the word? Ah, yes, that's it. So eager to make people's lives worth living, as, you guessed it, I had a gift of seeing the best in life. That preciously positive, sickly sweet worldview began to degrade as time passed, and I began to see the true nature of things, finding myself able to see past the whimsical facades of mankind's blatant lies to the ugly truth beneath. Well, to hell with all that stuff. What do you want to know? I'm assuming that the naive shitheads that are hearing this and wondering, what can change a person's views so drastically? will want to know how this all began, so I'll tell you. It all began in my freshman year of high school, pardon the pun. Those of you who are still young enough to remember high school will remember all the sex, drugs, and rock and roll of the times, if you know what I mean. To those of you who either choose not to remember or haven't experienced the monotonous, screwy life of a teenager, I pity you. You will either fall under category 1, the cool, drug-addled morons, the goody 2 shrewd nerdlingers, or you are just too young to have experienced it. Don't worry, I may know your futures, but I'm not here to judge. To be judged, it'll cost you a hundred bucks a session, so keep that in mind if you're trying to get something out of this. So, where was I? Oh yes, I was stating the obvious about the realities of high school life. I was one of the very few exceptions to the rule I stated earlier. I was a complete and utter loner. Parents killed in a car crash before I could walk or talk? Check. Raped by a distant cousin who insisted on being referred to as Mr. Creosote, whatever that means? Check. Bounced from foster home to foster home to foster home to emancipation court? Triple check. The sob story is overrated, trust me. When all was said and done, I had only my work and the voices in my head to focus on, and that was just fine with me. Everything was just rosy until I noticed that the voices weren't just a symptom of how far gone my mind was, but they were... how do I describe it? They would tell me everything that would happen before it would. Now, just having millions of voices in your head would be enough to drive anyone off the rocker, and the tide has ebbed since I first noticed it, but it dealt with it differently than most. I put my game face on and kept it on. It worked for a few months, sorry, excuse me, weeks until I started to feel the pressure. When it all came to the great finale, I was thrown in the hospital on psych watch, and every doctor that saw me couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Until, that is, when I met Dr. Harani. He took a deeply vested interest in my case, which I still have trouble comprehending in my weaker moments. When he was unable to reach diagnosis, I was referred to, of all things, a psychic. And that leads me to this part of the story, the part in which we are currently at. I worked with the psychic for about a month before I truly began to comprehend the magnitude of my strength, and that's when the conversation shifted from dealing with the voices to harnessing the power of their words. I'll never forget when it happened. It was exactly 46 days from the first meeting when I began to focus on the relevant voices and realized that they were telling me messages intended for others. When I realized this, I was sitting across the desk from the psychic, daydreaming as usual when things weren't that interesting. I suddenly blurted out, that's my purpose. The psychic looked at me as if I were crazy. <laughs> the irony is just so rich, isn't it? The crazy one telling the other crazy that they're, get ready, crazy. Now try and tell me that that isn't hilarious. When I finally realized the blatant truth that was blaring right in front of me, I knew I had to take action. And before I knew it, I was asking the psychic to mentor me in the field of, well, mind reading and message passing, etc., etc., etc. Happiness is where you look for it, right? I had figured out how to properly channel and relay a message within the first week of mentoring, and when I realized that, I decided to, yep, drop out of high school, cut off contact with my psychic slash mentor, and my psychiatrist, much to their worry and whatnot. I knew what my true calling was, and there was nothing that would stand in my way. So why am I such a cynic now? 
Well, over the years, you see some things that can't be unseen and they really weigh on you. So those are my qualifications. Take it or leave it. You still owe me a hundred bucks, whether I give you any advice or not, so yeah. Well, I guess that makes sense. You still want your fortune told whether you like it or not, so here it is. 2017 will bring many deaths to your family. I mean, they're old, so I guess you could interpret it as just really keen perception. But I do have a little more insight than you think. Oh, come on, don't give me that look. You need to see this as it is, as an end to much suffering. Think about it. How good is a continued existence if you need someone to wipe your ass, to spoon feed you because you can't do it on your own? You know what I mean. Whether you want to know it or not, I will tell you your personal fortune. It is, after all, what I'm paid for. For you, this will be a year of enlightenment, a sort of coming into your own. Every decision you make will affect you down the line, good or bad, so don't worry about a thing. Don't fret about living a life of perfection so you have everything you need down the road. Life doesn't work like that. Live in the moment, and trust everything to work out down the line. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to see a man about a diseased horse.